Hello and welcome, you're watching Head to Head on UATV and I'm Alice Gerdjuk. Today we're talking about developing Ukrainian towns and small cities. Often these places are the last to see advances and receive assistance, but many programs are aiming to change that. To discuss one of these, we're joined in the studio today by Susan Fritz, director of the USAID Regional Mission in Ukraine and Belarus. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you. So, Ms. Fritz, uh, first let's talk about the issues that small communities face here in Ukraine. From your work, what are you seeing? Um, so, I, I think oftentimes um, that smaller communities are passed by, you know, the larger communities get the attention and the assistance. Um, but what we've seen in our decentralization work and supporting reforms in decentralization, namely the consolidation process, we're seeing communities come together. So the smaller ones that maybe are not viable uh, alone come together and uh, into consolidated communities and they're getting resources from the central government and USAID and the EU are supporting these newly consolidated communities to be able to manage resources as well as to um, basically make their communities better lighting, infrastructure, and things like that. Well, yeah, for sure. I hope that this decentralization reform is going to, to develop and continue because not, of, not all of the communities are, are united yet. But uh, as far as I know, USAID has an initiative called Mistechko, right? right. Um, how has it operated in Ukraine and for how long? Tell sure. us about it. So Mistechko USAID is a unique program. It's a grassroots a form of communication to bring our programs to the local level. So to explain what we're doing in Ukraine um, by our projects going out and talking to citizens. So we've had um, 18 such mistechkos over the last six years. Mm -hmm. um, we usually do about three a year. And um, essentially it's an opportunity to, to, for people to talk to us firsthand about the work we're doing here in Ukraine. But where are these mistechkos located? So um, usually we try to co-locate them with a city day. Ukraine has a wonderful tradition of city days. Uh, so we co-locate our Mistechko USAID um, with the city days. And this year we're doing three. We did two already and we have one more to go. Uh, Krivy Rik, um, uh, Mikolaev, and now we're going to do Kramatorsk coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. But do these Mistechkos operate just for one day or do they operate on permanent basis in these locations? Okay, so they're just one day. It's an opportunity for our projects to um, basically talk to citizens to tell about the work of USAID, um, uh -huh. including the reforms that we're supporting. Um, they get to interact with our uh, partners, our um, experts, and to learn more about what we're doing. But it's a one-day event. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what topics do Ukrainians bring up uh, on this uh, Mistechkos, on this city? Days, so to say. Well, um, it's different everywhere, but um, I think what we hear mostly is people are surprised that we're doing so much in Ukraine. Uh -huh. And they don't, um, a lot of the work we do is supporting reforms in Kyiv and the central level. And so people don't really hear about that work. And so what the Mistechkos allow us to do is bring it home to, to citizens to for them to see how does our program uh, in their community actually benefit them. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really communicates at their level. Okay, so how do they benefit? And um, how do you support the Ukrainian ongoing reforms? So how they um, benefit, so uh, different programs have different ways of, of sharing information and, and the benefits. And I'll, I'll just give you one example in the sure. health sector. Um, so USAID is supporting the health reforms that are going on at the national level. So at the Mistechkos, we explain what those reforms are all about. Part of it is getting information out so people know how to sign up, how to uh, use the new health system, and uh, to roll out those reforms at the local level. Um, but we also do a lot of work uh, on uh, communicable diseases like HIV AIDS and TB, as well as some work on immunization. So at the Mistechkos, uh, we also provide information on communicable diseases and to help people understand how they can protect themselves. Um, for example, people can get a, a rapid blood test to find out if they're infected with HIV and okay. then they can get treatment and go from there. So it's really, uh, it's informational, it's hands-on, very practical um, mm. kinds of information that we share. But do these activities differ depending on the age of participants? For example, kids, young people and adults? Sure, sure. We try to tailor our um, information and uh, approach to who we're talking to. So, 
for adults, um, we usually it's our project experts talking one to one, you know, sort of higher level information sharing. Um, but then we try for younger kids uh, to have fun activities because kids don't like to like, feel like they're in school, right? And so um, when they come to our Mistechko, they want to have fun. But we try to make it uh, fun to learn about different reforms. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, our judicial reform project uh, actually has a puzzle. And what they do is they um, kids can come and the puzzle is the courtroom in a democratic court. And so wow. they learn about the different um, players in the court system. There's information about each one. And as they put together the puzzle, they actually are learning something about a democratic uh, judiciary. This is exciting. Yeah. How does this mistake look like? This is some common space, some public common space, or how does it? So um, we usually set up uh, tents along a row, um, usually in a park. And okay. um, essentially, you, it's a good way because people are using the park anyway. Um, they just walk by and then they tell their friends. We've had particularly young people get excited about these events. They'll you know, run into the, the Mistechko and say, oh, this was fun. Let me call my friends and bring them back. So it's um, in a public space so anybody can come and enjoy and people can share the information so that more people can come. Mm -hmm. From the description of Mistechko USAID activities, I also get to know that uh, you're a specialist to educate people how to operate even with their finances. Right. This is very interesting, but how is this happening? So um, we have a, a big financial literacy activity uh, mm -hmm. through our financial sector transformation project. And the idea is to give people tools um, for uh, managing their own money. In Ukraine, um, I think there's a lot of misinformation and because of um, the history of Ukraine's uh, reforms in this area, people generally don't like to use the financial system. And so this is a way of teaching them how to use it and um, what the benefits are of uh, putting their money into the financial system and managing their own resources. Mm -hmm. This is useful. And how many people have used uh, your Mistechka so far? So we usually get about two to 3,000 people to each one. And obviously it depends on the weather. If you have better weather, you attract more people. Um, but yeah, generally about two to 3,000. Mm -hmm. And how do they react? What's their I mean, comments and feedback mm -hmm. about this Mistechko initiative? So I think um, my impression from the ones I've been to, my impression uh, is that people are curious. So they'll, they'll see the stands all set up and see a lot of people gathered and just kind of wondering about them. And um, once they start engaging, then they learn more and it kind of pulls them in. So they go from stand to stand to stand. And mm -hmm. they're um, interested. So, yeah, it, that's the, the reaction. I don't, I, I um, you know, obviously everybody's different, but I, I, I'm surprised that uh, people get so drawn in by them. Mm -hmm. But have they been aware of so much aid, so much assistance being provided? No, and that's the reason why we tried this approach. Now, this is unique for AID worldwide. Normally, we share information, videos, and you know, social media and things like that. Media content, uh, okay. Right, and so for, for, for us, this is a unique approach, and it, it works in Ukraine. Ukraine's such a big country, and um, for us to tailor our uh, outreach to the citizens in a local community, I think, is more effective. It seems to be working better in Ukraine than um, some other forms of, mm -hmm. of uh, information sharing. As you mentioned, Ukraine is a really a big country. What is the geographical coverage of this mistake, Mistechkos? So we've done them all over the country. Right now, this year, they've been focused more in the south and east, obviously. Um, we've got a lot of new programming going on in the east, so we wanted to make a special push this year. Because uh, of the IDPs? Because, because, of, because of the IDPs, of the, mm -hmm. our stabilization work. We have some new projects starting. And uh, so we wanted to make a bigger push to, to uh, show people in that part of the country what we're doing. But we've done um, goes in the West, in Lviv, in um, other places. I went to one in Odessa last year. Mm -hmm. So we're all over the place. Um, we, we try to cover uh, as much as we can in terms mm -hmm. of geographical coverage. So Mistechkos, they educate people about uh, the reforms going on in Ukraine, about mm -hmm. the contribution that USAID is, uh, is making in, in, in these reforms. Uh, what priorities uh, does the USAID select for this 2018 and for, for mm -hmm. 2019 year? So we work in four major sectors. So we work uh, on stabilization and humanitarian assistance. We work on health systems reform and, as I mentioned, uh, communicable diseases and immunization. 
Uh, we also work on democracy and governance and economic growth, including energy security. As I mentioned previously, uh, we're making a big push to expand our programming out east, uh, where we see greater development needs uh, in addition to the humanitarian assistance that's required. Um, so we're making a big push that way, but also energy security is another area where we've expanded our programming significantly. This is interesting and very much needed right now in Ukraine. But what projects are um, the most effective, in your opinion, right now? Right now. So I would say our work on decentralization, um, and as I mentioned, we've done that in partnership with the government and with the EU. Um, the, the decentralization reform is, has been very successful. Um, some of the other areas in which we're working that um, have been successful as well is we work with farmers uh, and uh, producers in the agriculture sector. Uh, that's also more rural-based uh, in Ukraine. And um, so we've seen the increase in jobs. We've seen an increase in um, uh, production as well as sales of ag products. So um, those would be the two I would highlight off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of decentralization, as far as I know, Dnipropetrovsk uh, region is kind of a leader in, uh, in it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what still needs to be done? I mean, what is lagging behind in Ukraine that we could improve in order to, mm -hmm. to make our communities better? So I think um, the, the reform has started and communities are coming together to consolidate, um, but they need capacity to manage the resources, the new resources they're getting that they haven't had before. And so I think building that capacity is really important. Um, I think there are some uh, additional legislative uh, requirements that will help strengthen the capacities and, and the responsibilities uh, that local communities are have or will, will receive. And so there's still some additional, I, I would say minor things to improve the reform, but I think it's, in my opinion, it's irreversible and um, is uh, really touching the lives of individuals at a very uh, local level, in, in particularly in rural areas. Yeah, let's hope that it's irreversible. Let's I hope. hope so yeah. too. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this conversation. That's all we have time for. Thank you. Thank you. This was Susan Fritz, director of the USAID regional mission in Ukraine and Belarus. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Alice Gerjuk. Goodbye.